Uh, hey everybody, this is March the 19th, 2021. I'm back in my woods again. <clears throat> Which is pretty common for me now. Um, I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit about, you know, more gallons and getting back to nature. But first I want to give you an update on the magnets. I'm still using the magnet therapy. And it is still working. Okay, I, uh, I started out using the small disc, you know, to put over my ears, under my ears and over my ears or wherever I needed them. And uh, it seemed like it helped reduce the frequencies around me. And uh, it helped with the ear pain. It helped with, uh, with the noises, you know, that I was hearing and all in my head and all that. It helped all that. Um, but I also have to say that I was wearing the small, uh, wearing them inside the, uh, on my cap too. So I had those same small magnets that I had on my ears. I had them inside of a cap. I had one of those, um, you know, those like, satin caps that you put over your head like when you sleep in. I just taped like four of them to each side of the cap. And I just started wearing that, you know, at night when I'm sleeping. So I've been using the, the small magnets for my head and for my ears. And I have seen such a big difference. It's just really unreal in the frequencies. Um, before, when I was hearing all the roaring and, and rolling sounds and rushing sounds and crashing sounds in my head and all, you know, when I would get hit with the lasers, like they would, they would hit me with the lasers and then I would start, my, my head would just start going, you know, crazy with all these weird sounds in it. But with the magnets, as long as I'm wearing the magnets, uh, that seems to be reduced. I mean, there's like, I, mean, I can't tell you how good it feels to have silence, like in my, in my ears and in my head. So I have silence right now. So I did kind of get some bigger magnets. I moved up to uh, a bigger size because I just wanted to see, you know, how much better it would work. So, but in order to do the big ones, you'll have to, I mean, you can't, it's impossible to tape them to your ears and all. So you'd have to have a, a hat that's got some kind of cover for the ears that you can just kind of make them, you know, where they fit inside the covering of the ears and wear them like that. So that's what I've been doing with the big ones. And the big ones are working. Uh, using the big ones and the, and the small ones together, like uh, sleeping with the small ones in and then trying to wear the big ones, you know, around during the day. Uh, has made a big difference because the frequencies around me, I mean, I know the frequencies are still here. They're still hitting me. Uh, and sometimes if I don't have my magnets, like, over my ears and they hit me, you know, my ears will start ringing again, you know, because they're always trying to hit my ears or my head and try to get, you know, get everything disturbed. So if they catch me without my uh, magnets over my ears and they hit me in the ear, then it will start over. So then I have to start over with the, you know, with their magnet, magnetic therapy. So it's something I have to wear all the time, you know, during this targeting phase that I'm going through. But anyway, um, the big, let's see, the, I've got one of these big magnets over my cap now. Let's see if I can show you one. The big, the bigger ones that I'm using now are like this. This is the big ones. And now, like I said, you, you, you can't tape these over your ears, but you can, like, you can, like, stick them down in a, uh, the flap that goes over the ears, you know, on your cap. Or a better idea would maybe even like Ken said. Ken said that uh, those big, uh, heavy-duty ear, earphones have magnets in them, and that you might be able to just get a set of those earphones and wear them, which I want to do. I'm going to get me some of those big earphones, but um, that might work better than just trying to, you know, fit the magnets over your ears. Um, so there's all kinds of things you can do with the magnets. I mean, like I said, you can do the, mag uh, the, the pulse magnetism. You know, if you know how to set that up or if you have one of those machines, or you can just do the regular magnets. But just want people to know I'm still doing the magnet. I'm still using the magnets and they're still working for me. Okay, so... Um, and another thing I wanted to point out was before I started wearing the magnets, um, 
when they would hit me with this, when they hit me in the ears with those lasers, and they were always targeting my ears. But before, when they would hit me in the ears, I would hear like, I would hear like the uh, frequency drop in my ear. I'd, I'd hear like a, or like, it sounded like I had a hearing loss in my ear, and then, and then I'd hear the, you know, it hit me, and then I'd go, you hear this ra loud ringing in my ear. Before, the I started using the magnets. That's what was happening. You know, I would have like hearing loss in my ear, and then it would hit me, and then all the, the the loud tones and all the other stuff would start happening in my head. But now I've noticed with wearing the magnets, I mean, they still know where I am. They can, st they still, they can still track me. But now I know when they're probing me. I know when they're, I know when they're looking for me. So now it's like they have to probe around to look for me. And the, when they do find me, usually, like I said, used to, they would hit me in the ear. But now it's like when they, when the, when the frequency's hitting my ear, it's like. Uh, you can hear, you can hear it like it sounds like a rush of air that goes through your ear, but it doesn't hurt. I mean, it's like there's no like uh, there's no popping sounds, there's no hit, no really not really a, a, a hit in the ear. There's no pain, and there's no you know rush and roaring sound. So I think that I mean I know I think that the impact the, uh, the implants in my ears. Maybe de deactivated, and that may be why, you know, there's silence now uh, when they hit it. Uh, but then again, I don't know how many implants are in there, if there's one or there might be more than one. But um, I know there's some improvement, okay? So there's a deactivation of the implants, and I kind of tend to believe, like, you know, like the guy said in the post, that the magnets will make the more gallons explode, so... Um, I'm thinking that might be what's going on with the ears. Maybe the, the magnets have deactivated the more gallons inside the ears and inside the head because I've been wearing them, you know, inside my cap. But as we know, it's temporary, so it can come back because more gallons is self, you know, replicating. So it can come back. So it's something that you're going to have to keep up. Okay. Well, and what I what I kind of want to talk about today was nature because I've been hearing the call for some time now to get back in nature. Um, I actually, I guess it was probably the beginning of 2020 or when all this new targeting started is when I was started hearing the call for to get back in nature. And, um, well, you know, it's not easy to just drop everything you know move out of your house and go back to nature it's not i mean it's not it's not something you can just do with the drop of a hat so i've been hearing the call but here lately i've been hearing it stronger and you know the the message that the Hopi indians gave was that uh everybody everybody's going to have an opportunity to receive the message okay the Hopi Indians say there's a message. This message from the Hopi Indians is supposed to be in everything and everywhere. In other words, he said the rocks, the trees, the mountains, uh, the clouds, the sky, everything around you is going to cry out with this message for humanity. It's going to be a strong message. And if, okay, not everybody, I don't think everybody's going to hear the message. Because not everybody is tuned into nature like they should be. You know, but a lot of people are. So, uh, hmm, what's that big gaping hole right there? Hmm, retrieval. Anyway, not everybody's tuned into nature, you know, like they should be. So, um, the way they talk is not everybody's going to receive the message or not everybody's. Not everybody is going to disconnect from their lives long enough to actually stop and listen to nature. So, not everybody's going to receive it, but that doesn't um, mean that the message is not being sent, okay? The message is being sent out. It's being sent out. And I didn't know how strong until probably uh, last week. I mean, I knew, I was get, like I said, I was getting the message. I started getting the message back in the beginning of 2020 when I, when my new targeting symptoms started. 
about returning them to nature, but I didn't really get them as strong as I'm getting them now. And I think that the more time you spend in nature, uh, the more uh, the more sensitive you're going to become to uh, nature around you, to the, to the uh, natural life around you, and the more you're going to be in tune with that, and so, which means you're going to be able to hear the messages from nature more clearly, you know, or, or, or stronger. So, since I've been spending time in the woods, I've been hearing the call of nature that's, you know, that's gotten a lot stronger for me. And the message is clear. It's return to nature, return to nature. Now, like I said, this is not something that you can just do at a drop of hat. You can't just uh, lock up your house and move out in the woods. You know, you still have, you still have to survive. I mean, you still have to take care of your home and you still have to, you still have your job, you know, you still have things you got to do. But you can, every chance you get, every free uh, time that you have, you can spend it in nature and trying to listen to the messages that nature is putting out there. And right now, folks, for me, it is strong. I mean, the call is getting stronger and stronger. I know, and it seemed like the, the more, the more I struggle, the, the more I struggle to survive with everything that's going on with me, with Morgellon and the targeting and all, it seemed like it's ramping up, you know, and, and I'm, I'm really getting to the point where I don't feel like, I don't feel safe in my home anymore, like, you know, y'all know what I went through with the smart meters, you know, and, and then the lasers through the windows, and, and now there's like chemicals, there's a chemical being sprayed. It seems like in my house, I'm always smelling chemicals and just going up my nose. But it, I don't feel like my, my house, is, I don't feel safe in my house anymore. And I think that might be an indication, you know, from nature that this is something that's going to be necessary. It's going to be something, it's going to be necessary for us to do if we want to survive what is here. Now notice, I didn't say what is coming. I say what is here. What is here right now and what some people are experiencing is so traumatizing and so life-threatening. I mean, our lives are literally threatened on a daily basis. With more gallons, with the targeting, you know, with the, uh, the smart meters and the, uh, the lights. I'm every, they're literally trying to kill us off. That's what I believe. I mean, I, and it's... it's Definitely, in my case, they are. And so, it's a, it's a constant struggle for me. But I feel like the call from nature, the call I'm getting from nature is return. Return to nature. So, that's why I'm out here right now. And that's why the videos that I've been making lately have all been in nature. Because I have heard the call. Um... And then last week, I was standing, uh, standing at my back door, just kind of looking out, you know, into the woods, looking out into this area from my door, you know, drinking a cup of coffee. And it's like, I, I was looking at my red tips, because I got some red tips planted around the edge of my property. And I was looking at the red tips, and it's like, it's like when I looked at them, it's like they were calling me. They, it's like they were saying, come, come, come. And I'm like, wow. Oh. I was mesmerized by it because the red tips were actually, the trees were actually speaking to me. And so I walked. I felt like I was kind of like in a trance, you know, or maybe they had me, you know, they finally had my uh, complete attention. So I just started walking towards my red tips. And, you know, I still had my coffee, you know, drinking my coffee, but I walked towards my red tips and when I got to it, he said, come closer. And so I walked around the shrub so I could get closer to the red tips that was speaking to me. And it's like it just all started just pouring out of, of them. And it was coming straight to me. The message was that 
you thought 20 years ago when you planted these red tips, you thought that you were just planting them because you liked them and then you thought they would be pretty someday? That's what you thought. But you didn't plant them for that reason. There was a specific purpose for why you planted these red tips. And the purpose is for this time right now. It's for you to return. You to return to nature because this is a sacred place. This place where the red tips are growing is a sacred place. You planted this because you were led by spirit to plant them. Yes, you liked them. You thought they were pretty and you thought they would make a pretty landscape for the future. But here you go, you know. Here you are. So, and now... And I just, I just kind of brushed out in tears when I heard it because, you know, I guess deep inside of me, I did know at the time when I was planting the red tip, I did know that there was a divine purpose for it, but I didn't, you know, at the time, I didn't really put it together, but I've always been a, a big lover of trees and nature and woods. I always love being in the woods, and I've always loved having trees around me. Uh, which most people are just opposite. They like for their yard to be clear and clean, you know, and open. And and I'm just opposite. I like uh, I like to have trees around. But anyway, I guess I I kind of knew when I was planting them, you know, that there was a purpose. But now the red tips were telling me, for such a time as this, these were planted for such a time as this, and it's time for you to return to your sacred place. It's time for you to return to nature. So what I've been doing for the past two weeks is I've been down there cleared out around the red tips. Now, I guess I need to walk up there and show y'all the red, red tips. Well, the red tips is, I, and I did a video about uh, uh, the New Year's, the New Year, a new, Happy New Year video I did when I I uh, talked about the uh, the little gifts that my grandbabies had left, you know, for the elementals. That is the red tips that are growing there. That's a sacred place, and we call it our little magical kingdom. But that's where the red tips grow, like, around in like a... They're formed in like a, a V-shape. And I didn't really intend at the time when I planted them for it to be in a V-shape. That's just the way it turned out. <laughs> you know, the way it, the landscape turned out, it turned out in a V-shape. But now I know that that V-shape represents a vortex. And uh, if you are spiritually awakened and you are a spiritual person, then you know that a vortex is an energy center where the energy, the energy is stronger if you enter a vortex. You know, kind of like a pyramid, too. Like everybody knows when you're in a pyramid, you know, it's the energy inside of a pyramid is all kind of concentrated in that inside that pyramid and it's stronger so the vortex it's kind of like the same thing if you're inside the vortex and you're there at the point you know the point of the vortex the energy is strongest so the red tips are formed in a shape of a vortex now some of them some of them need to be replaced because some of them died, you know, from lack, you know, of, of, I mean, just a care. I hadn't been caring for them like I should. I've been so busy living my life, but some of them need to be replaced. So I need to get some new ones and put them where the ones that died were. But the vortex is there all the same. It's still there. And so Mother Nature was showing me that inside this vortex, you'll be safe. You'll be safe from whatever happens because of the energy and the frequencies there and the, sa the sacred uh, uh, vibrations there and frequencies of the vortex. So um, that's what I was getting from nature about my red tips. So I've been spending time down there clearing out the, uh, trying to clean out the vortex, trying to clean out some of the uh, the trees, you know, the, the some of the... There's some weeds, you know, and some shrubs and stuff growing up in there that uh, I need to clear out so that I could get in there. So, anyway, this, this summer or this spring, 
as soon as the weather gets warm and stays warm, I will be spending time in the vortex, in my sacred place. I will be. And yes, if it's possible, I will be sleeping down there. I want to. I'm not going to move out of my house altogether because I can't, you know. I mean, I have to have, you know, my kitchen and all. I have to have, you know, all the daily things you need to survive. But I am going to definitely start spending more time in nature, in my red tips, inside the vortex. I'm hung up. Hold on. I am hung up. Inside the vortex. And I'm really in a different part of the woods right now. I'm not where the vortex is, but I will show y'all later the vortex. Um, I just wanted to walk through this other area to get some, take in some of the nature here. You know, in the natural elements of nature and some of the trees and all. But that's the message, folks, okay? That's the message that the Hopi Indians gave us. And that's the message that the Hopi Indians told us that the message is being sent, okay? The message is being sent. The message is being, it's being sent through nature. It's being sent through the ground. It's being sent through the leaves. It's being sent through the trees. It's being sent through the rocks. It's being sent through the grass. It's being sent through the air. It's being sent through the sun. It's being sent through the water. It's being sent through the... Everything around you is crying out and sending out the message. Return to nature. Return to nature. Everything around you is sending out this message. And I just hope that everybody gets it. Get the message, folks. Return to nature. And something else. I have noticed that since I've been spending time in woods, in nature, I have noticed that when I take a bath, that the more gallons, seems like it's coming out more. I don't know if it's uh, just from being around, you know, the uh, being outside, maybe the trees or something, or maybe just the energy of the trees that's causing the more gallons to come out. Um, now, of course, I'm still doing the, uh, the bathtub treatments and the Epsom salt and all, you know, and doing my internal cleanse. But what I'm talking about is before I take a bath, I have noticed that when I come in from outside, you know, from being outside, I have noticed the, the white looking uh, fungus on my skin, coming out of my skin. I, like, like I feel like itching, you know, I started itching, you know, I could feel some crawling. You know, and I look down at my arm and it's like the, some of the morgellons was coming out of my arm. And all I had done was just spend time out in the, tr in the trees, you know, or, or among the trees. I hadn't even had my uh, treatment yet. Usually I don't see the morgellons come out until I do the, the bathtub treatment with the Epsom salt. But this time, it was right after I came out of the woods. I noticed I started feeling all itchy all over. So... It could be that there's more gallons, you know, in the woods that's getting on me, but this was coming out of my skin, so I kind of feel like there's something in nature that may help pull it out. But it's possible I could have just got in some of the fungus, you know, from the, that were in the trees and all. Most likely. But, anyway... It was obvious that the Morgellons was coming out of my skin after I spent some time in nature. So, uh, I don't think nature will hurt the Morgellons. I actually think it will help. And I know it, it, I know it will help to get fresh air and take in the energy of the, the raw energy of the trees and the leaves and everything around you. So, it's always going to be good to get out in nature so uh that's pretty much all i wanted to say today guys is just spend time in nature if you can as much time as you can 
get back to nature and if you are spiritual at all if you are awakened tune in your ear tune your ear to the sound of nature try to listen to what nature is saying to you because trust me it is sending out a message it is sending a message and it is strong I mean I'm sure it's sending out lots of messages but the message that I've been getting the strongest since 2020 and mostly the last few weeks is to return to nature return to nature so that's it folks return to nature I love you guys